Hi, my name is Svelin. I'm a product slash experience designer. And today I want to share with you guys a concept that I just completed that I'm really excited about. Essentially, it's a way to quantify and visualize literary elements and lyrics in virtually any genre. To see rhyme schemes, metaphors, punchlines, and analogies, and visually explore what makes artists different. Much of hip-hop discussion today revolves around subjective experiences and views. He sucks, he's the greatest, he's the most lyrical. I want to bring subjectivity to these discussions, much like professional sports do. The NFL quantifies the performance of all their players, so at any single point, they can tell you who has the most tackles, rushing yards, interceptions, sacks, and touchdowns. I want to create that for hip-hop, so rap fans can have intelligent discussions based on objective measures, rather than just barbershop talk about who's the greatest. So this is the artist screen, and as you can see, we have a basic navigation menu where you can navigate and discover different artists, albums, songs, and even verses, or explore ranking, lyricism, cultural impact, and sales. Below that, we have a section for all your favorite rhyme schemes, metaphor, verses, or songs. And at the very bottom, you have a profile where you can access your settings, preferences, and all that good stuff. So here we have the artist, a short bio along with links to their social media accounts or Wikipedia pages, YouTube channels, and what have you. Below that, you can access their top-rated album, songs, verses, or guest appearances. On the right side, we have an album list with the title of the album and the year in which it was released. You can also sort by release date in this very corner. When you hover over an album, a few things happen. First, the play button appears so you can listen to the actual album. Second, a brief Wikipedia summary is displayed giving you the basic overview. You can click more for the full article. And last but not least, these badges, which actually appear for both artist and album. You have sales, which is however many units sold, rank, which is a derivative of the other three badges, and lyricism and cultural impact get a little more interesting. The lyricism score attempts to capture an artist's lyrical complexity. It's derived by looking at things like average unique rhymes, average syllables in a rhyme, average rhymes per bar, complexity of rhyming patterns, and of course the community gets to vote on lyrics as well, so the quality ones will surface to the top over time just like it currently works in Rap Genius. But perhaps the most interesting one is cultural impact, and I want to take a second to talk about this because as time passes, history tends to forget the immediate cultural impact that pioneers and innovators have in their respective time frame. So I think it's important to denote these revolutionary artists and groundbreaking bodies of work so future generations in 3033 can look back and really get a sense of who was pushing the creative envelope and had a lasting impact. Now, something like cultural impact is very subjective. But we could try to capture it by looking at things like Grammys, Oscars and other awards, ratings by critics in various publications, sentiment analysis on tweets, billboard charts, and by cross-referencing all those data sets, we can paint a picture and really start to get the sense of cultural importance and relevance. On a side note, I wanted to mention that similar attempts to quantify cultural significance have been made, and recently Charles Ward and Steven Skiena co-authored a book called Who's Bigger that ranks the most important people to have ever lived by analyzing Wikipedia entries. By the way, Eminem comes at 823rd on that list. Um, but of course, no method is perfect or without its flaws and biases. I just thought it was interesting to mention that, nevertheless. Once you enter an album, it looks very similar to the artist screen. The title and artwork are displayed, along with the badges in the top-rated songs, verses, and guest appearances. All the tracks are listed and can be sorted by track number, length, popularity, rank, lyricism, impact, or sales. And at the very corner, there is a button that lets you switch views. Clicking it brings you to the sound wave view. Here, you're looking at the sound wave representation of the actual songs. And currently, all alliterations are visualized in the form of blue highlights on top of the actual sound waves themselves, as you can see here. You can sort them by quantity or quality as communally voted. Hovering over one will display a pop-up with the lyrics of the given alliteration and a play button so you can hear it as well. You can also read the full lyrics or play the song in its entirety. This is what I call an artist's literary fingerprint. It shows the use of literary devices over the course of an artist's discography. Here you have the percentages, which can be sorted by quantity or quality, and at the bottom you have the literary composition for individual albums. For example, the use of narratives, which here is represented in yellow, was very high on the Marshall Mathers LP, it dropped significantly on the Eminem show, then picked back up on Encore, and so on. Hovering over the percentage, or the actual graph here, or here, will isolate a certain literary device, such as alliterations. When you do that, it becomes much easier to spot the discographical trends over time, as you can see the use percentage in individual albums. 
It becomes clear that the M&M show had the highest use of alliterations, measuring at 19%. But most importantly, you can read the top-rated ones on the right and see which song and album they belong to. Hovering over them will present a play button so you can actually hear them as well. Hovering over an album will display it on the graph and update the percentages. As you can see, metaphors and narratives were dominant on the Marshall Mathers LP, while analogies and puns were scarce. Clicking it will display its songs, where albums currently are, and retain the same graph type for the individual songs. Now in the corner is a compare button, which lets you compare artists, albums, songs, and verses. In this case, let's see how M's discography stacks up against Kanye West's. So this is the comparative rows chart, pretty similar to the previous ones. At the bottom, you can select which elements you want to compare. In this case, we have narratives, alliterations, punchlines, and puns. Also, there's an absolute and relative scale, which will even things out in case one artist has a shorter or longer career span. Hovering over an element will isolate it. In this case, different metaphor percentages will be shown. Here, we also have a different view, which is the comparative bar graph. In this case, all the literary elements are selected. This view makes it easier to spot differences between artists, and you can still isolate individual elements by simply hovering. Now, let's take a closer look at an individual song. Currently, we're looking at the literary spectrogram for Lose Yourself. Here, we could display information pertaining to the song, such as popularity and views, much like Rap Genius currently does. The literary spectrogram displays the composition of literary elements, as well as highlights them accordingly. This lets us know that Lose Yourself is comprised of 71% narratives, 12% metaphors, 6% analogies, and so forth. Here, all the narratives are highlighted in yellow, as you can see. On the very right, we have a navigational menu which can be hidden that lets us highlight different elements of the song, such as analogies, metaphors, rhyme schemes, and etc. Now let's explore the rhyme scheme for the first verse. And the first thing you probably notice, besides the insane rhyming pattern, is the highlighted slant rhymes, which are selected under rhyme scheme. And as you may know, those are not quite perfect rhymes. So reality, gravity, rabbit he, mabbit he, daddy z, etc are all grouped under the same color, blue in this case. Here we have a statistical column. The first item is the lyrical complexity score, which is based on a scale of 1 through 10. The circular graph surrounding it shows the literary composition percentage, and below that we have the number of unique rhymes, which in this case is 56. Then we have some averages, syllables per rhyme, syllables per bar, rhymes per bar. The possibilities are endless, since there's countless ways to slice the data. We can also explore an individual rhyme, so let's click the blue one for example. Now that we've isolated that particular rhyme, we can see it has a complexity score of 8.6, seven unique rhymes, an average of three syllables per rhyme, six syllables per bar, and two rhymes per bar. Also, you will notice that the rest of the lyrics have been turned off so we can focus on the visual form of the rhymes as opposed to the lyrics behind them. And of course, no lyrical analysis will be complete without the rap genius annotations that we've all come to love. Also, the literary bar has been hidden to give you more real estate to explore the lyrics that you love. So an interesting fact for those of you who are interested in the actual design process of this project is that I designed it trying to adhere as closely as possible to the golden ratio, which as you may know is a visual manifestation of the Fibonacci sequence. And the reason I did that is, for one, I absolutely hate arbitrary design. And I also believe that we are evolutionarily predisposed to find this proportion aesthetically pleasing. So all these screens um, to a certain degree have been designed around the golden ratio. So that concludes my project. It's nowhere near finished as it was done in about two weeks going from a blank piece of paper to what you currently see on screen. There's probably some stuff that I missed and tons and tons of new ideas and features that simply didn't make the cut due to time constraints. I also want to address some frequently asked questions I've gotten about this project. The number one question is, how do you get the data for all the literary devices? And my answer is, the exact same way Rap Genius currently gets theirs. Let the community annotate them, and then curate by voting on the best ones. Another great question I got asked recently is, what's the point of this tool? And to answer that simply, there's no singular purpose or point. I envision it as an API accessible platform thus creating endless possibilities. I think the most exciting part is to see what people come up with and build on top of this framework. Everybody from sociologists, historians, scientists, entrepreneurs, and music enthusiasts will find exciting uses for it that I'm sure I haven't even thought of yet. 
A friend of mine who's a neuroscientist told me, for example, that musical neuroscience research would greatly benefit from a tool like this as it would enable us to quantify the effect of lyrical content on our cognitive process, which I thought was pretty cool. And lastly, I would address a little more philosophical question. I had a guy tell me, well, just because this rapper has more alliterations and metaphors than the next guy doesn't mean he's a better rapper. Just because he's more lyrical doesn't mean he's the best. And I told him, you're absolutely right. It doesn't mean anything. It's not supposed to mean anything. This is not an indication of who's better or who's worse. It's simply a method to quantify lyrical content. It is objective, much like science doesn't use words like hot or cold. This is not um, an indicator to tell you who you should listen to or who sucks or who's the best. It's simply a tool that attempts to objectify something that is not traditionally very objective. So there you have it. I also want to shout out Shady Records, Paul Rosenberg, for following me on Twitter. Paul, can you please show this to uh, Marshall, the rap god? Marshall, if you're watching this, let me know if you don't like it, man. We could change the design. I will move the circles around and rearrange it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, links here in my bio, and see you next time.